God's blessings on the faithful and the righteous and the obedient in Christ Jesus. May the Spirit of the Lord give you ears to hear. May he impart in you wisdom and understanding and truth and clarity that you may know him and the Lord Jesus Christ. May the Spirit of God give you eyes to see. And I'm not, I'm not talking about natural seeing, but spiritual discernment. And that is by believing who he is. I'm Brother Joseph Herbert. And I'm going to go ahead and talk about those who seek after a sign, the wicked. Jesus says, a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. He was talking to the Pharisees. So, you know, God who is holy in all of his works, his ways, judgment. That's what King Nebuchadnezzar said after the Lord restored his reasoning and understanding. He gave praises to the Lord, um, praising and extolling him because God is good. And that word good, the natural mind, the natural man and the natural mind do not understand good and what that means. Good meaning moral perfection, good meaning perfection in righteousness. So without Christ, without salvation, without holiness, man is not righteous, man is not good. You know, one of the things is that you need to respect the fact that when you stand before God, when a man stands before God, he will give an account. He will be judged of his thoughts, his words, and his actions. And that word good, it should be magnified at the thought of it. Why? Because before sin, before the fall of man, before the serpent beguiled Eve, and they both bit into the the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, or the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Earth was perfect. Earth and everything else was perfect. God, God's discretion, he said and saw it, it is good. Why did he say it is good? Because God is good. No imperfection, no impurity, no defilement. That's the way earth was before the fall of man. But the sin, the curses of sin, generational curses, generational curse. Sin is a generational curse within itself. So sin entered into the world. Now man has fallen. Um, man is born with a sinful nature to rebel against God, to behave himself unwillingly to obey him, unwillingly to be unwillingly to be faithful to God. They know not what they stumble because darkness is the spiritual description of man and his actions. So yes, let me turn to Romans chapter three. As the Lord leads, he's given me this verses to go as I proceed. Because what do I, what did Jesus Christ mean when this, this wicked and perverse generation seeks after a sign? And no sign will be given but the prophet Jonah. Well, why did he call it wicked and adulterous? What is wicked? Wicked is evil. God is made good God is evil God made good and evil the devil is evil but he is servant to God because that's his cursed role in this uh life and eternity because he's already done a, he's already he's already um his time is already short that's why he's deceiving people. That's why he's deceiving people. 
because he does not want man to spend forever with God. So his cursed role is to still kill and destroy. But the sinful nature of man's heart before God is to um, be deceived, be naive to the fact that you don't. You, it doesn't matter what you do in this planet, that you just live it up and you're going to be okay. Many false religions will disrespect the deity of Christ, disrespect the deity of God. God is spirit. God has a son, his only begotten son who was alive. Then he was dead. Behold, he's alive forevermore. And also God is a father. He is a father to his saints, those who are truly born again, those who are truly born again. And why do I say that? Because you got to respect the fact that without being born again unto God, you can't call God your father. He's just God. He he made all things. He made all things heaven and earth. And so man's heart is to rebel against God. Now, one of the reasons why. Um, I wanted to go to, you know, the Spirit of God lead me to Romans chapter 3. You have to understand that you can't, apart from Christ, apart from salvation, you can't call a person good. The Word of God talks about um, judging or, you know, uh, what, what is it? Is it in Isaiah chapter 5? Woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And if you think about the music in today's time and even time before, you will get rappers or R&B singers that will justify their ways of action as good. Like uh, one of the examples is, uh, um, I don't even like saying his name, but Michael Jackson. Um, when he was charged of um, child molestation, so he presented himself as innocent that he didn't do anything wrong. But there's a history that was evident in his life that he is perverse. The way he performs and expresses himself, he seems perverse. He danced pervertedly. He danced perverted. You know, some of his songs, his songs was evil. And those who are not born again will, like, will not like what that statement, what I just said. His songs were evil. Why? Because it glorified not God and his songs were deceptive. He wrote a song called We Are The World. He wrote that song. Many, many other singers was on it. Many other musicians was on it. But he wrote that song, We Are The World. Now listen to that. We Are The World, meaning, well, We Are The World. That's what he said. That's what the title of the song was. Jesus says, if the world hate you, remember that it's hated me before it's hated you. And then First John says, the Spirit of God on John says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. <clears throat> and so the love of the Father, which is God the Father, maker of heaven and earth, all things made by him and for him. He wrote that song, We Are The World. And as far as I can remember, there is a line in the song called We Are The World that is demonic. And it blasphemed Jesus Christ. Because one line said that as God has shown us by turning stones to bread, he, he said that, and that's a line in that song. Jesus Christ, who is God manifested in the flesh, he did not turn stones to bread. He did not give into temptation to Satan when Satan approached him in the wilderness saying, if you be the son of God, command these stones to become bread. And Jesus rebuked him. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you see, those who seek after a sign behave themselves like Satan because Satan tried to tempt Jesus Christ to turn stones to bread. He knew Jesus Christ was hungry and thirsty. Jesus resisted. Uh, the Holy Ghost was on Jesus Christ. 
the Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ was already already baptized by John the Baptist, and he saw a sp the spirit uh, falling on Jesus Christ as a dove. So he's in the wilderness and he's tempted by Satan. He rebukes Satan, and then there's a second temptation. Now he he's taken to a uh, a a pinnacle, set on the pinnacle, and Satan tempts him again. If you be the son of God, f jump off this building. For it is written that they will catch you. The angels of the Lord will catch you. As I paraphrase that verse, that's in Psalm 91, as Satan quoted that. They will, if you, if you jump off this building, and the angels will catch you unless you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus rebuke him. Again, he says, it is written again, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Know that th these are signs that tempt the Lord. These are signs that man is capable of falling into temptation of. Man is tempted by the devil every day. Man is tempted by desires of the heart every day. And there's the third temptation, you know. Satan uh, takes Jesus Christ on an exceedingly high mountain and, set, and shows him all the kingdoms in a moment of time because Satan has, has been given power to do that. And he says to the Lord Jesus Christ, it, the, all these kingdoms I will give you, they are mine, and I will give you to give you them to I will give you the cities to you if you bow down and worship me. Jesus Christ rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan. You shall serve the Lord, your God, and him only you shall serve. So there are signs and wonders. There, there, these are signs and wonders. First Timothy talks about this. And many people are, are do marvel at spiritual matters. One of the things is like magicians. Magicians, they, you know, just like in the word of God, Simon the sorcerer, he, the, the people thought he was some great man from, from God. And they were deceived and naive to the fact that all these uh, sorceries that he was doing, they thought he was some great person from God. But yet, here comes uh, Peter with the Holy Ghost. Laying hands and people receiving the Holy Ghost, true power from God, true uh, and holiness unto the Lord of healing the sick, raising the dead. The devils are being cast out of people. Simon the Sorcerer, Simon the Sorcerer wanted this, wanted this power, but he had a unrighteous heart because he thought he can purchase the Holy Ghost with his money. Peter rebuked him. Peter rebuked him sharply. And, you know, just just like this world, again, when I was in the world, I used to love to watch magicians, David Copperfield, uh, Chris Angel, and some other few, just to name a few, you know, the card tricks. I remember one scene, I used to watch the show with uh, Chris Angel, and... When I used to watch this show in when I was in the world, if you look at this guy, this magician, he looks, he dress, he's always dressing dark. I always wondered about that. I always wondered, he's always dressing dark, dark uh, fingernails, black hair, but he's do he's doing these tricks. He's these magicians, this this magic trick, and people marvel. He did this one uh, card trick. He showed a person that was standing in front of a store, in front of a window, showed this person a card trick, and he went. He, he told the person to pick out a card, and he has back turned. So he went around a corner and then yelled, pick out a card. And the guy picked out a card, and and like I guess he shuffled it as far as I can remember. So Chris Angel came back and... Took the deck of cards and threw the entire deck of cards through at this window, and the card that that person picked up, picked out of the deck, 
was on the other side of the window. It, it was stuck on the other side of the window. Now, in my mind at that time when I saw that, like that, wow, I marveled at that. But now, as being truly born again, God gives you spiritual discernment that to know that, for one, all power comes from God. Two, you get your power illegally. You are a witch. You are a sorcerer. You are a wizard. You are a, a, a bad person. Put it that way. So you do these things illegally. You get your power illegally. You get it. And when I say illegally, Satan gave you that power because Satan is job is to still kill and destroy to stop man from spending forever with God. So, yes. So back to the heart. Why does why is the heart deceived and desperately wicked? Why is man deceived and marvel at signs and wonders? They want they want a God, but they don't want the true and living God. They don't want God. Again, that's why the false religions attack the deity of Jesus Christ, who is the Son of God, who came from the bosom of the Father, God the Father. And God is a spirit, the 301, the 301, as 1 John chapter 5 describes that. And so, Romans chapter 3 says this. Now, it talks about, uh, when I was talking about good, and that word good, in the eyes of God it says this in Romans chapter 3. As it is written, Paul by the Holy Ghost says, there is none righteous, no not one. Now, why did he say that? He quoted it, first of all, but why did he wrote it again? Because it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one, meaning apart from Christ, apart from salvation, apart from being truly born again, you are not righteous. You can't. And even if you are thinking you are righteous, you do good things, you are not righteous. It says, no, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. That if you look at those, if you look at the world and those who are on the Broadway, they don't seek after God. They seek a God that, you know, lowercase G-O-D. They seek after a God, but there is tribulations in their life. Their lives are Toss like a a like the wind on the sea of waves is tossed to and fro. Their lifestyles are out of order. That's why you have the the those who have drug addictions and you have uh, failed marriages and divorces and you have uh, fightings and wars and rumors of wars. Yes, James in chapter four talks about the power of the tongue. And so, yes, you have you have tribulation, you have all kinds of um, hostility in the world because of sin and the fall of man. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. They are all gone, gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. Now. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and says, good teacher or good master, how can I inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus asks him a question and says, why do you call me good? There's only one that is good, but and that is God. There's only one that's good, and that is God. And, you know, Jesus uh, ask them you have you know the commandments you should not uh still do not commit adultery do not do these things you no know, the ten commandments is, is what he was given love your neighbor as yourself and he's you know the rich and little says he kept all these things for uh since his youth for his youth and he he's he he's letting jesus christ know that i've kept the law but you know he sees the great possession that the rich and ruler has. And so, Jesus Christ says, you lack one thing. Go sell all your possessions. 
Give to the poor, deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me and that you may have the true riches in heaven. This pricked the heart. When Jesus Christ speaks, who is God in the flesh, power is being transmitted and your heart can either be pricked to reject the will of God or pricked to say to God Almighty or Jesus Christ, what must I do to be saved? You have these options, these choices. So the rich young ruler walked away sorrowfully. He did not do what was what was instructed. He turned down the instructions of God Almighty that is in Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. He didn't he didn't obey the instructions. He walked away sorrowfully. And so again, people seek after a sign. They think it's easy to get into heaven. They think all you have to do is be good. All you have to do is be nice and kind to people and you can get into heaven. That's false. It's false. Again, Romans chapter 3, it is written, Paul, by the Holy Ghost says, They are all going out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that does good. No, not one. Again, I, I will explain at times when I evangelize and make mention of you have, let's just say you have an elderly person that you know, maybe an aunt or or a uncle. And this person is like 95 years old and has done nothing to their own discretion bad or evil. They help out. They, they help out people in the hospital. They make uh, food for the homeless. They help the homeless. They do good things. They, you know, never been in, arrested. Never been in jail. Never been. Never had a ticket. Uh, they do good things, and they have not Christ. If they die. By thinking or having a mentality that they're, they're, they're good enough to get into heaven, they're not going to get into heaven. Why? Because they're not born again. You must be born again. You must be truly born again by the spirit and water. And so Jesus Christ, who is God manifested in the flesh, who was alive, then he was dead. Behold, he's alive forevermore. He is he is the only hope to spend forever with God. So it says this, their throat is an open sepulcher, meaning their throat is an open tombstone. They speak death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So it's talking about the, the conditions of the heart. Jesus says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So their throat is an open tombstone, an open sepulcher. With their tongues, they have used deceit. So they love to speak lies. One of the six things that the Lord hates, yet seven are an abomination, is a false witness that speaks lies. Um, one of the, you know, it comes from the devil. And, you know, it comes from the devil. He's the father of all lies. They have used their deceit. The poison of asp is under their lips, meaning the, the, the poison of a serpent is under their lips. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, working in the secular job, I mean, uh, you know, the word of God is very clear to me when Jesus says many are called but few are chosen. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. Everybody's on the broad way. Few that find it, they have life in Jesus Christ. So I'm being in a secular job, I work with also with another brother in the Lord who goes to my church as well. And everybody else is either professed Christian or just, you know, just not saved worldly. And some people profess other false religions like the Roman Catholicism and some other ones. Or you have people that think they're saved, but yet they use profanity. That yet they 
watch things that defile them, you know, because again, yes, Jesus said the light of the body is the eye. If your eye be single, then your whole body will be full of light. You, you have these people that think they are okay with God, that think they are good in the eyes of God and think they are going to heaven. They have not forsaken their own life. They have not committed truly to Jesus Christ who is able to save your soul from death and hell. He, who is able to save you and redeem you by his blood. His blood was the price that has paid it all. When he said it, it is finished, the, the debt is paid. Many don't understand the gospel. Many don't understand the glad tidings of Christ Jesus. They don't understand. So no fear of the Lord is before their eyes. They don't understand that the fear of the Lord is clean, that endures forever. They don't understand that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. They don't understand the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. They don't understand the fear of the Lord. They don't understand when Jesus Christ says, fear not the one who can kill the body, but is but fear the one who is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. They don't believe, they want to believe that Jesus Christ is just this nice person, this kind person. They don't want to believe that he also talked about hell. They don't want to believe that he is the just judge. He is the one who resurrected and is alive forevermore, seated at the right hand of the Father. They don't want to believe that they they. They fashion a God in their mind, and which is also known as idolatry. They serve a God who is fashioned in their mind and think they are going to heaven. No, that's not the case. That is not the case. That's why it says, in the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that what things soever the law says, it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin, meaning you know it's wrong in your heart to lie. You know it's wrong in your heart to steal you know it's wrong in your heart to commit adultery to dishonor your parents even you feel bad in a way that when you have lied or to your parents or you when you was being mischievous uh, before your parents or you can sneak off and skip school or, or sneak out of the house and at, at 11 o'clock in at night and then you sneak back in one o'clock in the morning, you know you felt some type of guilt that you dishonored your parents. And you know it's wrong to you feel you feel something in your heart that's telling you this is wrong. This is wrong. That's the that's the guilt because the law is written in your heart. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon all them that believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Many people take this scripture out of context for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, which is true. Man is guilty before God, a holy God, and man is on their way to hell, and these are the ones who are not born again. These are the ones who are not, who are not truly born again. Jesus says, they who believe not are condemned already because they have not believed in the only begotten Son of God. Your hope is Christ Jesus. Your hope is... Your only hope is Christ Jesus. So man seeks after a sign. So I want to read this, this uh, Matthew chapter 12 verses. Let's see here. I'm going to start in verse. Well, first, let me start in verse 31. 
Matter of fact, verse 32, it says this. Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees as a rebuke to them. He says, and whosoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whosoever speaks against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He's, he's reproving those who blaspheme the work of Jesus Christ because he healed on the Sabbath and, and cast out the devil out of somebody. Oh, he cast out devils by the prince or the chief of devils. They, they blaspheme the spirit of God through the works of Jesus Christ. They blaspheme. They, and people still today do these things. Oh, he says, oh, generation of vipers, how can you be an evil Speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What did he mean by that? Out of the contents, out of the plentifulness of your heart, it speaks. So what's in your heart that you desire, that you love doing, it will eventually come out. Even if you try to speak truth, there's something called discernment that you that will communicate out of your mouth. What you wear communicates who you are. What you watch communicates who you are. That's in your heart. What you love doing, whether it's playing video games, wicked video games, Resident Evil, or Metal Gear Solid, whatever the, whatever games are out. I don't know. I don't know what's out. You know, whatever sports you love to watch that provokes aggression, provokes competition and pride, that's in your heart that is called defilement that makes the heart defiled because th these are the things because of the, the pharisees they were prideful and thinking they know or kept the law thinking they were righteous when jesus reproves them and shows them the mighty works of the father through his hands through his his words that he has healed on the sabbath that he's casting out devils and healing the sick. He's he's doing these mir miraculous works. And they get angry and upset. And they blaspheme the spirit of God. He says, oh generation of vipers. How can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things and evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things now what he's, he's making a distinction of by making a comparison of man as a tree that bears fruit whether it's corrupt or whether it's good so you cannot say that you are a good person if you are speaking evil out of your mouth if you're a liar if you are a thief if you do if you if your expressions are communicating bad things but yet you present yourself as good maybe you are a quiet person but if you do evil as a quiet person that's the content of your heart a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things but i say to you that every idle word that that men shall speak now this for those who profess that they are christians but they works deny him denying the works of jesus christ denying the works of god almighty they speak they, they profess to be christians but yet they use profanity they use blasphemy they speak uh, gossiping, you know, speaking reckless, foolishly. This verse that Jesus Christ says right here should send conviction for you to turn to God Almighty in Christ Jesus for repentance. Jesus Christ says, but I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak will give an account thereof in the day of judgment. Every word that men may speak. Every careless word, 
every idle word that you have said, apart from being born again, apart from repentance unto God in Christ Jesus, apart from salvation, every idle word that you have spoken out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks every idle, every careless, profane, blasphemous word that you have spoken will be you will have to give an account on the day of judgment. And he says, for by your words, you shall be justified, meaning by your words, you will be corrected. And because God is just, he will justify his his holy righteous righteousness in his presence. When you are judged by him, he will show you I am just. You're not just because you have said these things in, out of your heart. It came out and you said it without the fear of God. You are being judged for this matter. And by your words, you shall be condemned. Condemned meaning you're damned for all eternity. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter to the kingdom Enter the kingdom of God, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in your name done many wonderful works and in your name have cast out devils? Then I will declare to them, depart from me. I never knew you, you who practice lawlessness or you who work iniquity. He says that that's the scariest words in all existence. So Jesus Christ, again, for by your works, you shall be justified and by your words, you shall be condemned. Now, in the midst of Jesus Christ saying this, then it says, then certain scribes, certain other scribes and the Pharisees answered saying, master, they call him master, don't even respect or honor him. Master, we should see a sign from you. They desire this. After what Jesus Christ just said, they are desiring to see a sign. But here comes the truth of Jesus Christ. What he said, he says, and an answer said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and there will no sign be given to it. But the sign of the prophet Jonah. Now, why did he compare Jonah as the sign because Jonah, who was commanded by God to go into the city of Nineveh and cry against it. But Jonah did not want to do so. He disobeyed and got on a ship to Tarshish. And long story short, concerning that chapter, you know, the mariners, the Lord sends a tempest, tempestuous storm and nearly break. The ship in half because of the wrath of God. The anger of God was kindled because of what Jonah did. And Jonah confessed who he was. And they he commanded them mariners to toss him out of the ship. And then the sea calm the sea calmed after they did that. And so the Lord was not done. The Lord sends a whale. And Jonah is in the belly of the whale for three days. And three nights. And while he was there, three days and three nights, he confessed sin and prayed to the Lord in the belly of the well. So Jesus Christ compares the sign that that will be given will be be as the son of the prophet Jonah, meaning when Jesus Christ gives up the ghost, saying that it is finished, he yields up the ghost. Goes into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights. As he goes into the belly of the earth for three days and three nights, it says the the earth quake, the rocks split apart, and the veil of the temple was torn from top to bottom. And so he will rise again on the third day, and he has done so. He has risen. He is risen. He is now seated at the right hand of the Father. So an evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, meaning they want answers from the media. They want answers from the president. They want answers of life's problems from politicians and uh, philosophers and uh, psychi psychiatrists and 
every other college life. They think they they place their hope in things, even evil, wicked power from magicians. And they marvel at that. They seek signs and wonders through celebrities and rappers and R&B singers and rock rock and roll artists and sports entertainment, the people who box and UFC, all this. They seek signs and wonders through people, places, and things. They desire things and not God. They desire people but not God who is able to save your soul. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rot not. He goes on. It says, The men of Nineveh will rise in judgment with this generation. Now, when Jesus Christ speaks of, when he says this generation, he's also talking about this generation. God is from everlasting. God is in the person of Jesus Christ. He was born from a virgin. Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh. So when Jesus Christ says this generation, the men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation. He's talking about this generation. Not just the generation where in the time when he was alive on the planet and and before he went to the cross. He's talking about this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and behold it greater than Jonah is here. He's already let it be known because the truth is pricking the hearts of the Pharisees and the hearts of the Sadducees and the hearts of the scribes and the chief priests and elders, the hearts of those who don't believe, they, they make a choice to receive or reject what is being spoken, what is being, what is, what is being seen in their eyes. He did signs and miraculous works and wonders in their sight and they still chose not to believe. Just like the children of Israel when they saw the great signs and wonders um, of the Lord through the hand of Moses. The parting of the Red Sea. The, the, the killing of the firstborn. They, they got delivered from the hand of Pharaoh and his army. They witnessed they witnessed that the, the the power of God. They still chose not to believe. That's why unbelief is dangerous. Jesus goes on and says, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. That's the queen of Sheba in first Kings chapter ten, when it says the queen of Sheba, Sheba is in Africa, came and hear, wanted to hear the words, the wisdom of Solomon. And she, it says, the word, the word of God says she was breathtaking. A spirit nearly left her when she saw all the miraculous structure, order, and kingdomship from King Solomon and heard his, his wisdom as he spoke. Jesus Christ, the Lord says, behold, a greater than Solomon is here when the unclean spirit is going out of a man. He walks through dry places, seeks rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from where I came out. And when he has come, he finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Then he goes and takes with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Now, a wicked and evil generation that seeks after a sign, the, the, people still don't believe that the spirit realm is real. People still don't believe about devils are real, fallen angels are real, and they enter into people because of sin, willful sin, and the defilement of the heart and Mind because of your eye gates and your ear gates. Your eyes are the windows to your soul. Your ears are the windows to your soul. That's why Jesus Christ says, be careful how you hear. That's why Jesus Christ says 
the the light of the body is the eye if your eye be single your whole body will be full of light that's why proverbs as i turn to it real fast proverbs chapter 4 it says this concerning focus I'm going to start at verse 23. It says, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Meaning, guard your heart. Guard your heart. How do you do that? You guard, you, you are careful of what you see and how you hear by your focus and maintaining a just weight and balance on the Lord. And take delight in him. Take delight in him. Put away from you a forward mouth, it says. A perverse lip, perverse lips. Put far from you. What does perverse mean? That mean, perverse meaning you are rejecting right and wrong. I mean, no, I'm sorry. You're rejecting right and good. That's what perverse means. You choose to do evil. You choose to do bad when you know good and you know what is right. But you choose bad and evil in a way that rejects the will of the God. Put away you from you a forward mouth and perverse lips put far from you. Again, this is how you focus on the will of God in Christ Jesus. The Spirit of God on Solomon says, let your eyes look right on and let your eyelids, eyelids look straight ahead, straight before you. What is, what is he saying right here? Let your eyes look right on. Meaning the will of God, God is holy, you, your focus is Christ. Yes, you cannot see God physically or visually, but he is available. You have commandments, you have his structure, his precepts, you have his word. You worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're worshiping God, you are to look straight ahead. You're not to, where it says in the next verse, let your eyes be, let your eyes look right on. I just read that. Uh, it says, ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Ponder the path, meaning consider where you, what, what your walk in this life is. Whether it's naturally or spiritually or mentally, you, you're thinking about direction. Acknowledge God in all of your ways. He will direct your path. So it says, turn not to the right hand, nor to the left Remove your foot from evil. That's what that's what focus looks like. You're focusing on the will of God, meaning your, your, your focus is supposed to be stabilized. Just like a expensive camera. Stabilizing imagery. It, 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 you know, you have an expensive camera, you, you you hold it to your your eye and you see the big lens turning around when you're pressing focus. Is, is, is guided focus. That's how your focus on the will of God is supposed to be. Stabilized focus on God's will for your life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who is able to redeem you by his innocent and precious blood and that he may grant you everlasting life when you are baptized in the water and his spirit cleansed by his blood. The five, it, it, I gotta read First John chapter 5 real quick. Uh, just real quick. Bear with me, please. This is high level truth here that I must read because many people don't believe. Many people do not believe. It says, let's start at verse 5. Verse 5 of First John chapter 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that bears witness because the Spirit is truth. God is truth. Jesus Christ is truth. He said, it is the Spirit that quickens the flesh profits nothing the words that i speak to you they are spirit and they are life where's that verse at mm. oh yes right here very next verse i'm sorry verse seven for there are three that bear record in heaven now 
No, I'm not going to mention that. The Lord's not going to allow me to mention that. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Let me read that again. For there are three that bear witness or bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The Spirit, God's Spirit, God, the Holy Ghost, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. That's what it says. So yes, every form of willful unbelief that is being expressed by an unbeliever, and you are a saint, you are a son of God, they are they will always discredit or attack the deity of Jesus Christ that he is God. You are to stay focused. God is holy, God is true. He made heaven and earth. All things are made by him and for him. Without him, nothing was made that are that was made. He made all things. Nothing caught Jesus Christ. God by surprise, he made all things. All things is a manifestation of his mind. The word of God says, by wisdom, he's found the earth. By understanding, the heavens were established. And by his knowledge, the depths were broken up in the clouds. They dropped down the dew. Meaning he formed all things. And his, mind, his, his ways are higher than our ways. And when he spoke it with the word, commanded, let there be light, and there was light, God, for, he, God formed all things. Read Genesis chapter 1. Read it for yourself. Read it with an open heart of belief. If you are able, if God is able to do that for you, praise the Lord. The kingdom of God has come near you. Please believe that. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. So, Again, you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know when you're going to breathe your last breath. But I'm telling you, this preacher that you are hearing, Brother Joseph Herbert, is preaching this gospel and will continue preaching the gospel until Christ comes back or Brother Joseph dies in righteousness in Christ. Because there is no turning back when you are saved. There's nothing more important than your eternal salvation. I am Brother Joseph Herbert and this is for his glory.